Well, we come to the message now, and I am so excited about starting this brand new series, Alive and Active. I don't know about you, whether you're feeling alive or active today, but we're going to start this message and this series based upon Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12, which says that the Word of God is alive and active. And we want to unpack that today in particular, but over the coming weeks and months, we're going to look at different Bible verses, dig a bit deeper, but ultimately also help apply it into our everyday lives. Whether you've got a great background on the Bible and you've been reading it every day for many, many years, or whether you've only ever heard about it in films or TV or different other contexts, and you've never really explored. We want this series to be designed for you to help each of us grow in our walk with God and in our exploration and journey about what the Bible means and how it relates to us today and the difference it makes in our lives. So the Bible is written by 40 different authors and it's written uh, between a time period of 1,500 years it's also the most popular book of all time. It's uh, had over, uh, translated in over 3,000 different languages, and each year alone it sells or is distributed over 400 million copies, and that's not even downloads alone. So I just want to encourage you, this book has an impact across all society, across all different life, and is the core holy book of the Christian faith. It is God's word to us today, and it is the ability to transform lives. There's power in this book, in God's word, and we want to just help explore that. We're going to go on a journey, and we're going to look at lots of different verses. But in the meantime, we're going to focus on Hebrews chapter 4, and Adam is going to read for us today our verse and the passage that we're going to be uh, unpacking and speaking into this morning. Hello, Statue Community Church. Today's reading is from Hebrews 4, 11 to 13. Let us therefore make every effort to enter into that rest, so that no one will perish following their example of disobedience. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Well, thanks, Adam, for reading that for us today. And that is just this great little scripture passage for us to explore in a bit more detail this morning. I want to just give a little bit of context to earlier in the chapter. It talks about entering into God's rest. We see that a little bit in verse 11. But what does it mean to enter God's rest? Well, we, if we look at the Bible as a whole, it talks at the very beginning in Genesis about the Sabbath, about God resting on the seventh day and the importance. It's even in the fourth commandment, isn't it, to uh, keep the Sabbath holy and to rest. But what does that mean for us now and today? Uh, I think that this passage here and entering into God's rest is a more a reference to uh, walking in sync and in step with God. That rest, I think, is referencing salvation to an extent that actually we don't have to just work hard to enter into that rest in a salvation sense. But once we've experienced God's grace and his love, which is only attained through Jesus Christ and his uh, gift of love to us that's available for us all today. Well, actually, it's, it's going beyond that. Once we've received that, then we have to work hard uh, and we have to make every effort to live according with his word, to, to obey his, uh, what we've uh, not just agreed to, but what we've given our lives to. Some days it's difficult being a Christian, but it says here that we have to be diligent. We have to make every effort to enter into that rest. So once we've given our life to Jesus, there's lots of things that will distract us, that will try and pull us away. We have to really keep ourselves on guard. And I want to share a little bit more about that in a moment. 
but I really believe that we have to make every effort and be diligent to enter the rest which we've heard about earlier in the chapter. But the words that in this scriptures say this, to, that the word of God is alive and active, quick and powerful and effective. God is all powerful. That actually his word has a, a deep impact and is effective in our lives. But what is this power and what does that power do in and through us? Well, we see that it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Again, other translations will say that it discerns and exposes. I think they're great other alternative words for us to use. The word judge often has negative connotations. We don't like to judge other people and we don't like to be judged ourselves. But in this context here, it isn't about condemnation. It isn't about being brought down, but rather it is a revealing of what is inside of us. Someone once said to me that as we are reading the Bible, the Bible is also reading us. As we are reading the Bible, the Bible is also reading us. We see here that as we uh, read it and uh, the Bible has the ability and the power to expose our very inner thoughts and attitudes and our mind. It does go on to say the thoughts and attitudes, the desires we have, the intentions. We spoke last week, didn't we, about the, the importance of authenticity and being honest before God. We see in verse 13 that we cannot hide anything from God. We might hide things from one another and we might uh, not want everybody to know our business, which, you know, it, we need a private life as well, don't we? But I think that there's an element that here we can't hide anything before God and that he sees straight through that. The word of God sees straight through our very being to the very core of who we are. But ultimately, this isn't, you know, when we read the word of God and the power that it has isn't just to discern between good and evil, to see if we're a good person or a bad person, because ultimately we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We've all made mistakes. We've all gone wrong. So this isn't about whether we're good and, and measuring up or whether we're bad. But I think that this is revealing between whether we're godly or ungodly and ultimately whether we have belief or unbelief. That's probably uh, the most uh, best way that we can uh, explain that this morning is God gets through all the layers. You know, the, the Bible doesn't mess about it. It doesn't, uh, you know, weigh up uh, what's right and what's wrong, but rather it sees the depths of our belief and unbelief. And I want to just encourage us that sin can sometimes uh, uh, deceive us. It, it, in its very nature, it deceives us to say that in the moment, the, the, the lure of that sin, whatever that might be, is greater than the promises of God. But we know that is a lie. So I want to encourage you. The, re the reason we believe that the Bible is so important, not just because it's God's word and it brings life, but it protects us from the lies of the enemy. It protects us from the very lies and deceit of our own sin. And actually it helps us to grow our faith and grow in belief, not just of who God is, but all that he said, all of his promises that will come to pass that haven't already yet. So let us do just that. But how? You're asking me how, Matt? How do we grow in belief? How do we, you know, once the word of God has has looked at our heart and whatever it's seen inside, whether you're full of faith and belief today or whether you're struggling. I want to encourage us to, to apply it into our lives and protect us from the deceitfulness of sin that will lead to unbelief. So how do we do that? We'll explore that just now. Well, the first is this, to dwell in it. It says in Colossians, to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I think that if we're going to uh, enter into God's rest, if we're going to uh, feed our faith and belief and fend off the deception, the lies of sin, then we need to be people that soak ourselves in scripture. I was talking to someone the other day about how they like to cook their food there and they like to use a slow cooker. 
I don't know about you, but in that, it's a great picture, isn't it, of being marinated. And, and as Christians, we need to be people that marinate ourselves in the word of God. I really believe that if we're going to uh, grow in our faith, the Bible has to be a fundamental and a foundational uh, part of our lives. It's the ways that we can know God more and grow deeper in him is by letting it be a part of our everyday moments. It says in the Lord's Prayer to give us this day our daily bread. The bread is referencing the word of God and just the, what we need for each day physically but spiritually more so and actually here we see that it's a daily practice. I want to encourage you get the word of God into you daily in whatever ways and means that is and I'd really encourage you to do just that. If you want to do the Bible in one year, if you want to find a way of just getting a verse a day, start small, download uh, the YouVersion Bible app or even go and get a Bible yourself. Start small and, and just begin to soak yourselves in it. That is a great way that we can put this into practice today. And also don't rush. I think sometimes I find it so hard to be still and to move on to the next thing. There's always something more to do. But a part of this is letting it dwell, soaking in it, spending time, pausing, reading it again and again and again. So how do we do that? We dwell in it. We let the word of God dwell in us richly. We also learn from it. It says in Psalm 32, verse 8, that I will instruct you and teach you in the ways that you should go. You know, we want to be people that learn, that continually have a hunger to, to know God more, but to also keep growing in our faith. The word disciple means to be a student. I don't know if you feel like a student or whether uh, you are a student. I want to encourage you to adopt the mindset of a student to continually to want to know, God, speak to me. How can I learn? What can you teach me about this? And yeah, what can we put into practice beyond that for sure? Dig a bit deeper. I would encourage you um, to whatever ways that it fits and whatever ways that you can explore dig deeper in in reading the word and, and finding out the true meaning and, and and how it affects our lives today i remember um, my friend recently has just got a new bible and in it it's got sections down the side where he can write his thoughts and reflections he's exploring and actually by having that available he can write down his own thoughts and reflections but also be open to what god wants to say to him I find sometimes learning, we have different learning styles, don't we? Some prefer uh, listening and some prefer uh, watching. Some people prefer putting things into practice and doing things. Whichever way that you learn best, whether you like to learn on your own, whether you like to learn with other people, let the Bible be something that you learn from. Whichever method you want, make the Bible be the basis and be the foundation for your lives. Be someone that pursues understanding, run after knowledge and seek it with everything that you have and understand more of who God is and feed your faith and grow in belief in him. This journey of discovery, I think that is just so essential for us today in uh, being alive and active. And the last thing is to abide by it. Another word for abide would be to accept or to observe to obey or to follow. And the verse that was on the screen is that if you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Holding on to something doesn't just mean to attain it as such, but also to, to, to live it out. Let's be people that are living out the word of God everywhere we go. It's one thing to listen, it's one thing to learn, but it's another thing to apply and to abide in the word of God. Someone also said to me that the greatest challenge that we have is not in understanding the difficult parts of the Bible, but it's actually putting into practice the parts of the Bible that we do understand. And that would be my challenge to us today. Firstly, dig deeper and, and, and explore and grapple and wrestle with the challenging parts that we don't understand. 
but let us be people that put into practice the verses that are a bit more simple to understand, that are a bit more clear for us on surface level, to love your neighbour, to love your enemy, to do to others as you want have them done to you. Let us be people that forgive. Let us not be people who judge others. You know, let us be people who are kind and encourage. You know, these are scriptures and verses that we can put into practice. They're hard, they're, they're very challenging, but actually that is what we're called to do, is not just to dwell on the scriptures, not just to learn from them, but be people that abide by them. So when we read the Bible, ask God when we uh, to reveal him to us, what he wants us to do with it. What is he saying to us? That's a great prayer when you come to reading the Bible. Lord, what do you want to say to me? And what do you want me to do with it? So ultimately, let us be people who dwell in the word. Let us be people soaking in the scripture, but let us be people learn from it. And then let us put it into practice and affect our everyday lives by doing what it says. So the word of God is alive and active. I hope you've been encouraged by some of the things that we've unpacked and shared today. And we're going to come to a time of Q&A in just a moment. And we want you to engage with these questions and, and learn and, and reflect on some of the things I've shared this morning. But in the meantime, I just want to come to a moment where we just pray, where we again ask God to digest these words into our, not just into our minds, but into our hearts and to shape how we live. So just where you are right now, I just encourage you just to, to pause just to be still and just to pray where you are. And I'm gonna pray for us now in these moments. So Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for, for the Bible. We thank you that you have given us this tool and this manual, this life, this guide for us to, to live for you, Jesus. But Lord, I pray that we know that it is powerful, that it's sharper than a double-edged sword and that it judges our thoughts and beliefs and our, our, our desires. But Lord, I pray that as you get through those things, you will see faith, that, you, that we will fight off the lies of the enemy through uh, taking hold of your word, that we will feed off it again and again and again. But Lord, help us this day. But we thank you as well for everything that you've done and all that you're gonna do. I pray for every home, Lord, for every person watching today, Lord, every person that is connected and engaged, Lord, that you will touch their lives, that they will grow in the knowledge of you, Jesus, that the Bible will be something they get excited about, that they are curious about, that they, they explore, and that it becomes a very integral part of everyday life. So we ask these things in your precious name, Jesus. Amen, amen.